Elon Musk once said that EV battery technology will never stop evolving. In the future, ones of new battery types designed to make EVs more efficient, charge faster, and cost way less than today's lithium ion batteries. He even admitted that Tesla's 46A is a solid option, but definitely not the best. Because there's a battery that could blow the 4680 out of the water, and most EV automakers are chasing after it. We're talking about solid state batteries. These things have the potential to give EVs a range of up to 1,000 miles on a single charge and are almost immune to fire risks. Toyota is so confident in this tech that they, they'll be the first to bring it to market, and they're betting that solid state batteries will help them reclaim the spotlight from Tesla and other competitors. Typically, solid state batteries could be the ultimate game changer in the EV. So, what makes Toyota so confident? What's so special about solid state batteries? and Musk falling behind on this tech. We're about to find out. Welcome to Tesla Car. Now, we don't know if you've heard of the term solid state battery before. But, if you're into EVs or EV batteries, chances are you've come across it. It's not a brand new technology, but we're willing to bet that not many people actually know what it's all about. So, how is it different from lithium-ion batteries? Well, at the core, solid-state batteries are still lithium-based. They still use lithium and don't ditch it com So in that sense, they're pretty similar to the batteries used in today's electric and hybrid vehicles. But, the big difference state batteries use a completely solid electrolyte, instead of the liquid or gel-type electrolytes found in regular lithium-ion batteries. To put it simply, Think of the electrolyte as the middle of the battery. Picture a sandwich. One has sauce in the middle, the other has solid meat. Yeah, one's liquid, the other solid. That's pretty much the difference here. We don't think it's hard to understand, but there is a truth you need to know. Liquid or gel electrolytes don't really offer any clear advantage over solid electrolytes. If anything, the only liquid ones are still so widely used is because the industry is just more familiar them and already has the tech and infrastructure built around that sp Let's talk energy density first. The killer feature of LMR batteries is their energy density, which leaves lithium iron phosphate batteries, the kind you find in budget and mid-range EVs, in the dust. LMR's energy density is said to be about 33% higher than LFP. To give you the picture, recent info says LFP batteries range from 90 to 175 watt hours per kilogram, depending on the tech and who's making them. LMR, though, is expected to hit around 232 watt hours per kilogram or more, which is on par with, or even better than, some top tier NMC batteries. This energy density gap is a big deal for how far EVs can go. With LFP, a standard EV like the Tesla Model 3 standard range can get about 250 to 310 miles with a 60 kilowatt hour pack. But with an LMR battery at the same 60 kilowatt hours, you could be looking at over 380 miles, maybe even 400 miles, depending on how efficient the car is and the driving conditions. That's huge for trucks and SUVs, which need serious range to keep drivers happy. The real-world range of LMR batteries depends on a bunch of factors, like how good the battery management system is, the weather, and how you drive. For instance, in cold temps, lithium-ion batteries in general tend to lose some performance, and LMR might not handle the chill, as well as LFP batteries, which are known for better thermal stability. Charging time is a big deal when you're sizing up EV batteries, and based on what we know about LMR batteries, 
They're looking to match or maybe even edge out LFP batteries in this department. Thanks to their higher energy density and better lithium ion transfer in that manganese rich cathode setup. For comparison, LFP batteries are already pretty solid on charging speed, especially with cutting edge stuff like KTL's LFP cells, which can hit a full charge in about 25 to 30 minutes with 4C charging rates. But LFPs tend to lag behind NMC batteries, which can juice up in 20 to 25 minutes at modern fast charging stations. With LMR batteries, if General Motors and LG Energy Solution can fine-tune the cell structure and thermal management systems, we're talking charge times in the 20 to 30 minute range, striking a sweet spot between speed and efficiency. Now on the safety front, LFP batteries have long been the gold standard among lithium ion batteries. Their lithium iron phosphate chemistry is super stable, cutting down the risk of fires or thermal runaway, basically when a battery overheats and goes haywire. LFP cells, don't hit thermal runaway until around 270 degrees Celsius, way higher than NMC batteries at 210 degrees Celsius or NCA at a sketchy 150 degrees Celsius. LMR batteries, with their manganese-heavy design, are expected to be safer than NMC since they use less cobalt and nickel, two elements that can spark nasty chemical reactions if you overcharge or crash. That said, early LMR batteries had issues with voltage instability and shorter lifespans. Recent studies show that adding dough pants and protective coatings to the cathode has seriously boosted LMR's stability, but they're still not quite on LFP's level when it comes to rock-solid safety. If not managed right, LMR batteries could still overheat, especially during fast charging or in hot conditions. You might not know this, but manganese is the fifth most common element on Earth, making it a cheap and abundant alternative to pricier battery materials. From what we've heard, cost is one of the biggest wins for LMR batteries. Industry sources say LMR batteries are designed to cost about the same as LFP batteries, the cheapest lithium-ion option out there. Right now, LFP batteries run around $98 to $112 per kilowatt hour, while NMC batteries are pricier, at $112 to $120 per kilowatt hour. By leaning hard on manganese, LMR batteries could hit a similar price to LFP, around $100 per kilowatt hour or even less once they're mass produced. Plus, since LMR EV batteries are bigger, they cut down on the connecting materials and structural bits needed to hold battery packs together, saving even more cash. GM reckons this slashes 75% of the costs for battery module components and 50% for the whole battery pack assembly. That's a huge competitive edge, especially since LMR batteries pack 33% more energy density than LFP. For the same price, LMR can give you a longer driving range, letting EV makers lower car prices while still delivering top-notch performance. That's why General Motors and LG Energy Solution are betting big on this tech, aiming to roll out LMR batteries in mass production by 2028 for affordable trucks and SUVs. If you're wondering where Tesla stands on LMR EV batteries, it's no secret. Tesla, along with a bunch of other companies, has been digging into this tech for about a decade, and at least six companies are working on lithium manganese batteries. Back in 2020, at Tesla's Battery Day, Elon Musk first threw manganese batteries into the spotlight. He said, it's relatively straightforward to do a cathode that's two-thirds nickel and one-third manganese, which will allow us to make 50% more cell volume with the same amount of nickel. Basically, he was saying it's not rocket science to whip up a cathode with that mix, and it could let Tesla churn out 50% more battery cells without needing extra nickel. Musk pointed out that manganese is super common, which means less reliance on pricey, hard-to-get metals like cobalt paving the way for scaling up battery production to tens, even hundreds of millions of tons to meet the world's shift to sustainable energy. Fast forward to 2022 at the Gigafactory Berlin opening, Musk doubled down on manganese's potential, saying, I think there's an interesting potential for manganese. He saw it as a middle ground between cheap but short-range LFP batteries and high-end but expensive NMC batteries. He also stressed that to hit the insane goal of producing 300 terawatt hours of batteries a year, the industry needs to lean on abundant materials, like manganese, since metals like nickel and cobalt just can't keep up with that kind of scale. So why hasn't Tesla dropped any updates about using these batteries in their EVs? 
the answer is pretty straightforward. There are still some big hurdles to clear. Even though LMR batteries are hyped as a game changer with a 33% boost in energy density, they've got a nasty problem with voltage decay. After a bunch of charge-discharge cycles, the voltage starts to slip, which tanks the EV's performance and range over time. The main culprit is the manganese-rich cathode, which gets unstable at high voltages and starts breaking down. This directly hits the battery's lifespan and cycle life, which is way shorter than other options like LFP. While LFP batteries can handle 2,000 charge-discharge cycles like CHAMPS, LMR batteries typically tap out at 900 cycles before their capacity takes a serious dive. That makes them less durable and reliable, so EV makers, especially for heavy-duty stuff like trucks or SUVs, have to think twice before jumping in. Even though LMR batteries are safer than NMC ones because they cut down on cobalt and nickel, they can still overheat Think Thermal Runaway if they're not managed right, especially during fast charging or in hot conditions. That manganese-heavy chemistry can trigger side reactions under tough conditions, upping the risk of fires or explosions. Compared to LFP batteries, which are rock stars for thermal stability and can handle up to 270 degrees Celsius before going haywire, LMR batteries still need work to match that safety level. This means they'll need a beefier battery management system, which jacks up development costs and could hurt LMR's edge in the market. These two issues, thermal risks and the need for complex BMS, are the biggest roadblocks for LMR, and they've got to be sorted out to compete with what's out there. It got us thinking about another battery type, one that's arguably the most promising right now, solid-state batteries. These things are being hyped as the holy grail of the EV world, poised to blow past the limits of lithium-ion batteries. So, what's the deal with solid-state batteries, and why do they matter? Unlike traditional lithium-ion batteries that use a liquid electrolyte to shuttle lithium ions between the cathode and anode, solid-state batteries swap that liquid for a solid electrolyte, think ceramic, polymer, or sulfide. This switch brings a ton of killer perks. First off, they've got way higher energy density, packing more juice into the same size, so EVs could hit 600 to 750 miles on a single charge, nearly double what a Tesla Model S can do now. Second, they charge crazy fast, 80% capacity in 10 to 15 minutes, compared to 20 to 30 minutes for the best lithium-ion batteries. Plus, since there's no flammable liquid, they're safer, slashing the risk of leaks or fires, which is a huge worry with lithium-ion packs. They're also tougher, losing less capacity over time, promising decades or millions of miles of use, and they're greener, cutting reliance on pricey, sketchy materials like cobalt. But like we mentioned with LMR, solid-state batteries aren't perfect either. They're stuck wrestling with some hefty challenges of their own. Solid electrolytes often struggle to keep good contact with electrodes over many charge-discharge cycles, making them prone to cracking or losing performance, and mass production is still a tough nut to crack due to complex processes and high costs. That's why companies like Toyota are pouring everything into making this tech a reality. Toyota's been at it since the 1990s, racking up over 8,000 patents on solid-state batteries, more than anyone else. In 2021, they showed off a prototype with a 700-mile range and a 10-minute charge time, initially planning to roll it out in hybrids by 2025, but later pushing full EVs to 2027. They've switched to sulfide electrolytes, which conduct ions as well as liquids, and boosted durability to over 1,000 cycles with minimal capacity loss, equivalent to over 186,000 miles. Toyota's teamed up with Itamitsu Kosan to develop sulfides and build a factory by 2027. Plus, they're working with Panasonic, Nissan, and Honda on a government-backed R&D project in Japan. They're eyeing high-end models, like luxury SUVs, with solid-state batteries delivering a 621-mile range and 80% charge in 10 minutes. They even claim this tech will cut battery size, weight, and cost in half compared to current lithium-ion batteries. But here's the catch. Toyota hasn't shown hard proof that they've fully solved the durability issue, and scaling from lab to factory is no walk in the park, with their 2027 to 2028 commercialization goal still a few years off. Meanwhile, another tech's turning heads, sodium-ion batteries or salt batteries, which ditch lithium entirely. These are shaping up as a serious contender in the energy revolution 
especially as the world hunts for alternatives to lithium-ion batteries to power EVs and store renewable energy. Unlike lithium-ion, which leans on increasingly scarce and pricey lithium, sodium-ion batteries use sodium, a superabundant, dirt-cheap element found in seawater and the Earth's crust. Sodium sits right below lithium on the periodic table, with similar chemical properties, which lets sodium-ion batteries work on the same basic principle. Sodium ions zip between the cathode and anode through an electrolyte to generate electricity. But what makes sodium ion batteries stand out is their ability to slash costs and environmental impact, promising to bring EVs and clean energy closer to the masses. Let's dive into why these batteries are getting so much buzz and what they could mean for the future. The biggest win for sodium ion batteries is their dirt cheap price tag. Sodium is hundreds of times cheaper than lithium. Sodium carbonate used in these batteries costs about $200 to $300 per ton compared to lithium carbonate, which swings between $10,000 to $15,000 per ton in 2025. In addition, sodium ion batteries don't need cobalt or nickel, two pricey metals that come with ethical and environmental baggage from mining. Instead, their cathodes use stuff like sodium metal oxides or phosphates, and their anodes use hard carbon both cheap and easy to make. This drops the cost of sodium ion batteries to an estimated $50 to $70 per kilowatt hour, way below the $100 to $150 per kilowatt hour for lithium ion batteries. That low cost makes them perfect for budget-friendly EVs or energy storage systems for solar and wind, where pinching pennies is key. On top of that, sodium is everywhere. You don't have to rely on concentrated mining hotspots like lithium in Australia or Chile, which cuts supply chain risks and boosts sustainability. Performance-wise, sodium-ion batteries currently hit an energy density of about 100 to 160 watt-hours per kilogram, lower than the 200 to 250 watt-hours per kilogram of lithium-ion batteries. So EVs with sodium ion batteries get shorter ranges, around 155 to 250 miles, compared to 310 to 370 miles for lithium ion batteries with the same pack size. However, sodium ion batteries make up for it with impressive fast charging capability and durability. They can charge from 0 to 80% in just 15 to 20 minutes thanks to excellent sodium ion conductivity and they can handle 3,000 to 5,000 charge-discharge cycles with minimal capacity loss that's roughly 10 to 15 years of use. They also perform well in extreme conditions, especially in low temperatures where lithium-ion batteries often struggle. Safety is another big win, since sodium-ion batteries don't use flammable materials like cobalt or metallic lithium. The risk of fire or explosion is significantly lower. That makes them a strong candidate for large-scale applications like power grids or electric buses. But sodium-ion batteries aren't without challenges. Their lower energy density makes them less competitive for premium EVs that need long range. Think Tesla Model S or Lucid Air. Researchers are working on improving the cathode and anode to push energy density up to 200 watt-hours per kilogram, but that's going to take time. What do you think about these three battery technologies? Will they overcome the current barriers and become mainstream in EVs? Drop a comment below. Thanks for watching. See you next time.